Good evening, friends. I hope you're all doing well. I'm so fine. My name is Atikur Rahman. I'm an AWS Certified DevOps Senior. So today I'm going to show you how you can install uh, MongoDB in Amazon Linux 2023. So as you all know, Amazon Linux 2023 is based on uh, Fedora. If you don't know, please uh, view my other tutorials, which I created previously. So this new Linux, it's uh, it's different. Not a, not everything is supported here. For example, MongoDB is not by default supported. If I go to like uh, MongoDB uh, the website and read their documentation, they say that clearly says that at this moment when I'm writing this, they do not have the support for uh, Amazon Linux 2023. They do have support for Amazon Linux 2, but not the 2023 one. So um, what we can do, what we can do is we can use Docker and uh, use Docker to install uh, MongoDB and run it as a background. So I will do that. But I'm just going to show you uh, that, yeah, it's still slow, but anyway, uh, I'm not going, Opening. Okay. Let's let's go there. Just trust me that Amazon Linux 2023 is not supported by MongoDB at this moment. So in future, I hope they will uh, change a lot of things. And uh, okay. so it's now loaded. So I'm just going to show you uh, the product section here. Um. Yeah, it is a bit slow. I don't know why. So I go to resources and server. So installation. And they have uh, installed the community. Uh, mostly people will use the community one. So you can go to Linux and then you have Amazon and so uh there it is amazon linux 2023 uh, mongodb is not currently available on amazon linux 2023 but this can change so for the time being what we can do we can use docker and do a little bit there so let's go and do this so i'm going to launch a new instance yeah if you're seeing this video like five years now you probably don't think what is this stupid because then it is already supported but now it is not supported, and this is kind of like what I need. Mongo test. So, uh, Amazon Linux 23 is like already pre selected, you don't have to change anything. Um, T2 micro, it's fine, but probably for Docker, I would suggest T3 series, T3 uh, small. That's good. I am just going to choose a key pair that I have created previously. If you don't know how to create key pairs, watch my other videos. By the way, I will create more uh, tutorials. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel. A lot of people don't subscribe. I don't see any value here because it's free. You don't have to pay anything at all for subscribing. That's it. That is what I'm requesting you. So um, what we did, uh, I gave a name. I used Amazon Linux 23, that's actually pre-selected. You don't have to do anything. I just changed the instant I put T3 is small, but I think T3 micro is also fine it's for the time. Created a, used an existing key pair, uh, used an existing security group. If you are new to AWS, you just create a new security group. You just create a new key pair. That's it. Pretty simple, nothing else. Then the last thing is in the advanced section is that I'm going to choose one instance profile because I'm going to connect using systems manager. So click launch. And uh, if you use systems manager, the beauty is that uh, you don't need to use port 2022, port 22, and you don't need to connect, use any sort of like putty or SSH, any kind of tool. It's all connected through the browser. I'm not using Putty for a long time, I think, maybe, oh, I don't know, two or three years. I'm not using Putty at all. I just don't use Putty. Systems Manager is doing well. It's great. 
we can connect it from the browser. It is very convenient. You don't need to install any tools and it's secure. You don't have to open port 2022, sorry, port 22, not 2022, only 22. That's funny because like when I'm saying Amazon Linux 2023, so it's like I have to attend to that. That's not the case. So, um, hmm, are we there yet? I have a blog actually, which describes what I'm going to do. So as usual, you can just copy paste the commands and uh, I will give the link in the video description. Just copy paste the commands and run. So uh, yeah, my instance is still not ready. It takes around two minutes time. Just uh, like if you are doing this, just have a cup of tea or coffee or blah, blah, blah. It should be ready within two minutes. So. Let's connect. And yeah, it's ready. Let's go. If you have noticed that I'm using DNF rather than YAM because it's Fedora and Fedora is used DNF, not YAM. But there is a symbolic link is already created. You can run the YAM as well. So, but I'm suggesting to use DNF because if you're on Fedora, it's DNS, DNF. That makes sense. So to issue, I'm just going to paste it and run it. Yeah, so they are asking me to give my permission to install Docker 20 and yeah. So what is the current Docker version? Docker latest version. Do I see these notes? I think what I'm what? What using. I think 24 and 10. Oh. I think it's a bit older. Anyway. It should work. So uh, let's uh, clear the screen. Then I'm going to uh, start the Docker. Let's, let's start the Docker. I'm going to enable the Docker so that you don't need to run the start command again in your whole life. That's the beauty. You don't need to run this start Docker command uh, again because if you reboot, it will auto start. Well, I'm going to use the Docker image from the Docker Hub, Docker to Mongo. Well, what is the size? Docker, let's see. Docker um, 4.1. Usually, if uh, the official sizes are quite high and it's 653. Well, not bad. Not bad. 652 means it's a half a giga. So. I would go to Docker Hub and see is there any like uh, alternative version available, which is like Alpine. Probably this is based on the OS operating system that is using behind the Mongo. So that's why it's too high. Let's go to Mongo. No, search Docker Hub. And Mongo, this is the official image. And what I'm going to see that uh, is there any cheaper version, cheaper I mean size, smaller size version available. So I'm going to fill that with Alpine. Is there some Alpine version available? No, no, why it's not? So uh, this is. Um, wow. The compressed size is 2.13 gigabytes. I mean, that's insane. Huh. That is very high. 
Perfect. What is this? Four, oh, this is a small. 4.4 focal. Uh -huh. This is smaller. This is smaller. But uh, I haven't used focal yet, so I don't know whether this is well. Uh, I'm not going to use it. Okay. For the time being, I think size doesn't matter because uh, we are in cloud and uh, we don't have to worry about the bandwidth. But if it's on your local, then like the 653, it's quite big. And it will take around 30 minutes to download. So just keep in mind. Anyway, then I'm going to create a folder. So that's what I'm going to do. This will create a folder for our data storage. So usually what happens is that you start a container, you stop the container, then the data is like, uh, if you have to be, everything is lost. Whereas if you use a volume local storage and then uh, link the container with the volume part, then your data is safe. So um, then I'm going to uh, run it. This will, uh, what will happen is that this is uh, running Docker with the image that we used, Mongo, and this is creating a volume, the folder that we created. So data DB is related to that local folder. The dash D means it's run inside the background or uh, daemon. So let's see, Docker uh, PS, this is the one, Mongo DB name. It's running on port 27017. After 10 seconds, uh, image name is Mongo, container ID, and uh, looks good. Now I'm going to uh, run the Docker exec command with Mongo SH so that we can do some interesting things over there. Now, if you see, I am connected with that container via the Docker exec, and IT means interactive. So, like, Mongo is its command I'm running. And here it says that uh, it is connected to it. But by default, it's connected to the test database, right? So just bear in mind. I can create a new database. Like it's pretty simple. Use Athic. And it switches to the Athic database. Okay. Then um, I just did a hello world thing. I copied from the MongoDB official site. You can do a lot of other things here. Okay, so um, db dot insert. Let's see if I can run it. Okay, I just have to uh, one check. I just need to do aggregation operation. I'm just checking some uh, if, if I can run some interesting comments here. Oh, yeah, then let's insert methods. No, I want to insert a uh, document, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to run it longer with a shell. Okay, so BB, I think we just need to um, users dot insert name equals I think. Oh, password equals uh, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. Where is the password? Okay, let's see if we can run it. Mm -hmm. it um, I just uh, run the insert command. And then query documents. Uh, yeah, okay. So db.users.com. 
find it found the one document with name and password so this is it this is the database that is working fine we created a collection we created a uh, insert of some data we retrieve data and uh, we can actually delete the data as well with uh, like uh, delete commands so that's that's pretty simple so that being said, uh, this is the way to install at this moment, install the MongoDB on Amazon Linux 23, so that uh, in future, maybe this will change and you can directly run this um, the DNF install MongoDB command. But for the time being, use this process to uh, install MongoDB on your uh, Linux 23 uh, instances. I hope that helps you to a lot. Uh, if not, then just uh, in this specific time. If it's helps, then subscribe to my channel. I will get more videos like this and I think you will like it. So that being said, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.